Okay, guys, this is going to be uh, my very uh, first lesson uh, for animation, uh, starting on my animation series here. Uh, my goal is to take you through some of the uh, fundamental understandings and principles uh, that I have acquired uh, as an animator, uh, things that I have uh, found to be useful when it comes to animating, and um, just little uh, tips and uh, techniques and tricks that you can use uh, when it comes to using Max as your animation tool. And hopefully uh, by the time uh, this series is over, you should have uh, a very good understanding and you should feel pretty comfortable and confident with your ability to uh, attempt you know whatever animation uh, comes to your mind so with that being the case uh, the first thing that we're going to look at animating which is one of the primary and most principal things uh, to do and that is actually animating a ball uh, bouncing and it is honestly a very uh, simple task um, but there are some things that we need to uh, kind of talk about and discuss uh, before we start that and you know and understanding what exactly does it mean to animate and things like that um, before we begin I want to just bring to your attention a uh, concept that I have developed um, that it helps me when it comes to animating. Animation equals timing plus change divided by motion. So what that means is any kind of animation that you're going for. Let's say you're going for uh, a character that walks into a room very sad. Well the animation that you're going for is a, a sad walk into a room. So uh, the first thing that we have to figure out is the timing uh, you know how long uh, at what point does the character enter the room and how long does it take for him to get into the room you know if he's if he appears and moves into the room rather quickly uh, the, it's probably going to change the emotion that we're going for which is sad because things that happen rather quickly tend to be more excited, more happy, where something that is uh, that takes a long time to uh, occur or, or slow to occur can be a, a sad thing or a depressed thing or a, a worry state of mind. So the timing would be important. You know, how long does it take for the body to enter the room? That's going to help us uh, create the animation that we're going for. So once we know, you know, how long it sh we it should take, we then actually go and make that change. And hopefully uh these things together uh, actually equal, equal out to the emotion that we're going for. So like I said, if we're going for something that is slow or that is uh very sad, then the change that the changes that we're going to make will also be things like uh the shoulders being down, the head being low, these are all the changes that we'd make and where they are uh, in time, you know, how long do they take to occur, those will all lead to the actual animation of somebody walking into a room slow. Um, so this is just a, uh, a little formula that I have developed that uh, helps me, uh, hopefully it'll help you guys. Um, but uh, So let's go ahead and, and move on and take a look at what we're uh, some of the things that we need to uh, first take a look at when it comes to animating. Um, the first thing that I want to uh, bring to your attention is uh, as we see right here we've we've got our ball and we can see we have the the three axes uh, that the ball sits in uh, X, Y, and Z and uh, what I want to kind of uh, emphasize to you guys is it's so much easier. Let's say we want to have the you know the ball bouncing into the room. It's so much easier when we focus on one axis at a time. Uh, for example, I'm just going to really quickly uh, just do a a quick test animation here. Um, let me see. 
that the ball is going uh, side to side from one side to another and obviously you can tell from uh, from watching me do it that it's all completely on the Y but if I turn the grid off and I turn the ball off you have you know just looking at it you have no idea that this is uh, something that's taking place along the Y axis uh, explicitly it could be moving across for example let's say I get rid of that keyframe and we do this again but this time I'm going to move them this way oops uh, let's do it here I move them across the X and the Y axis okay it has the same effect we see the exact same thing occurring he's moving across the screen the the major difference here though is that this guy is breaking or uh, traversing two axes uh, the X and the Y to get to this position and you know it's kind of irrelevant to do that it's it's easier because now we have two axes that we have to take into account two axes that we have to uh, adjust keyframes for and it just you know for just a simple movement like this going across the screen uh, it's it's just easier and I just recommend that you always um, when you start your animations and you're, and you're planning out especially when you're beginning that you uh, that you look at it and you and you uh, like if the character is going to walk into a room have them walk in just on one axis um, you know as you grow into being animators and you can start you know worrying about things that like he comes walking in and breaks over here and you know when he starts breaking the axes those are things that I recommend you get to uh, that we will also get to later on but leave stuff like that uh, for once you're a little more comfortable as an animator uh, when you're first beginning uh, stick with one axis at a time think that you'll find uh, that you will we'll feel a little more comfortable about it and uh, you should have a little bit better luck. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and um, we're going to start our first animation. And uh, obviously, we've made a ball. And if I go to the front view, um, we want our ball sitting up, sitting up on the, uh, sitting up on our above our gr our grid plane here. If you wanted to actually make a plane uh, like so you could uh, if that helps you to see uh, where the ball is and when he passes through the ground uh, by all means and maybe for the sake of argument I'll go ahead and and do that now and I'm going to actually uh, select on the plane and right click go to object properties and I'm going to tell it to freeze but I'm going to uncheck the uh, show frozen in gray option so that I can't click on it and uh, we can still see it as green uh, now quick thing to to note uh, let's say I'm going to create a sphere real quick okay and if as we can see it creates it and it's in the ground uh, a quick way of getting the ball to the to the surface is to take a look at our radius so let's say the radius is 30 a quick way to pop this guy to the surface is put it on 30 on the Z and you'll see that that's sitting perfect because that's the radius uh, so 30 out from here pushes it up perfectly onto the top of the ground so just a little uh, thing to keep in mind as we're doing this also you'll see down here we've got the X uh, the Y and the Z coordinates these are going to be very uh, useful when you're animating um, as we can see right here we can just quickly place them wherever we want uh, same thing you know seeing where these positions are copying pasting different things like that these are all going to be very uh, a very useful tool for us when we're animating um, another one before we get started is going to be up here uh, our motion panel and we see right here we get the PRS parameters that is our position rotation scale position rotation scale parameters right here um, 
and as you see we've got create key and delete key and then we've got position rotation and scale so uh, when we adjust these or whenever we pick on this notice that everything beneath changes to show us our position keyframes we switch now we're on the rotational keyframes and obviously here's our scale keyframes um, so if we're looking at any given frame and we see that we have the ability to create three keys or you know create a key we don't have the ability to delete a key that's just a quick way for us to see that hey at this frame uh, we don't have a key because as soon as we create a position key then the only option we have we can't create one anymore the only option we have is to delete one um, and the shortcut to to kind of create all three is hit K and K will create a create a keyframe no matter where the object is at that time uh, it'll create the keyframe for it at that position so it's a uh, a useful thing I'm gonna go ahead and get back to where we were okay so K is going to uh, create our position rotation and scale keys at one shot um, notice uh, if I do that down here, we can actually, uh, as long as we are selecting anywhere in our timeline, we can actually make a mar marquee selection around our keys, which is a uh, very useful thing to select on a couple if we want to space things out uh, or if we want to select them all and delete delete them. Uh, you can hit the delete key or you can right click and go delete selected keys or you can go delete key and get specific to the uh, per axis uh, so I think those are the the basic things that we need to kind of use to get started um, the uh, next thing is uh, use an auto key and there's many different uh, animation theories out there many different animators that some prefer set key over auto key some prefer using the big button uh, the big button obviously sets uh, position rotation keys for us um, so it's the same thing hitting the big button is the same thing as hitting the K key uh, does the exact same thing uh, me personally I have uh, been a big fan of auto key and the hot key for that is hitting N uh, N will turn on and off our auto key so let's go ahead and turn our, our auto key on and we have our sphere sitting over here and what we're going to just basically do is we're going to uh, just animate this ball bouncing across this plane now what I'm going to do I'm at frame zero right now so anything that I do notice and what auto key does is you know, you know, it does what it says. It's going to automatically make a cue for us. But notice that no matter where I move this guy, it's not making any keys for us. That's because we are at frame zero. Remember the uh, first part of the formula, animation equals timing plus change, uh, divided by motion. The first part of that is the timing any changes that we make at frame zero are, are changes that have not uh, had any effect so frame zero is always going to be where things start I'll put it back down on the ground here um, and one of the things that uh, that I like to do we know we're going to be over here at zero so basically uh, in the hundred frames this guy is going to bounce all the way across to this side um, one of the things that I recommend when you're first starting, like I said, we want to make sure we pick an axis. So we're going to use the Y axis in this case. Uh, and we're going to focus on that. Obviously, when he bounces, it'll be just a Z. Uh, but we're going to focus at one axis at a time. And uh, since this is ball is sitting flat on the ground, I'm going to go into, uh, let's see, let's go into the left view. Uh, so I'm in the left view here, and I'll turn on, uh, let's see, I can't even see that if we do that. So, there we go. So I'll just F3, and then I'll F4 so we can actually see the plane. 
So since we know that this guy is sitting here on the ground and we want him to bounce across, now we can see uh, that this is going to be the x-axis when we were noticing before that it was the uh, y-axis that we were using. So this is the point where I'd like to, I'm going to go back into perspective and I'm going to uh, just find a nice little angle here and this is going to be my camera view so I'm going to set something like this up and this is the angle that I like I want to when we you know if we wanted to render out the animation this is where it's going to be so I'm going to hit control C on my keyboard and we see that that creates a camera for us and it creates a target camera so the first thing I like to do is switch it to a free camera I personally don't like target cameras So uh, the reason why that's useful is now we can go to our uh, to our left view, and whenever we want to uh, kind of see what our animation is looking like, we can always just hit C and bounce back to the camera. Because maybe we you know we'll go to perspective and maybe we'll change an angle or something as we're animating, and uh, we can always hit C and pop back to the actual shot, and uh, L will get us back to the left view. So now that's a lot of uh, preliminary talking uh, just to get us to the point where we're going to animate. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get started. So I'm going to turn on auto key. And uh, remembering the formula, the first part is the timing. So we need to figure out uh, what the timing of our bounces are going to be. And what I like to do is figure out uh, when this guy bounces, uh, what are the how long is it going to be till he hits the ground the next time and the next time and the next time so for this uh, first exercise the bouncing is going to be very uniform uh, the ball is just going to bounce on its own all the way to this side so what I recommend is uh, using since we have 100 frames here I think that it's pretty clear uh, to see what kind of math we have if we say every 20 frames is going to be a bounce um, another thing that I like to do is um, I'll actually hit play and I'll see the timeline uh, moving and remember this is 30 frames a second so we have a little over three seconds here if we're looking at 100 frames and what I'll do is I'll hit play and I'll start to imagine in my head uh, you know, I'll imagine seeing the ball move, and then at the time where I see it in my head hitting the ground is where I'll hit stop. So, for example, I'm gonna hit play, and then once I hit play, I'm gonna imagine the ball animating, and then I'm gonna stop it when I see it hit the ground, and that will give me uh, a, a good idea of the timing of the first bounce. So, so 23, right about here is where I saw. You know, the, bounce, the ball hitting the ground over here, but instead of 23, because what's half of 23? Right, exactly. 20, what's half of 20? 10. So we know exactly uh, where to go for our mid frame here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say this is uh, how far or how long, this is our timing for the first for the first bounce and since it's going to just bounce all the way across we're going to use 20 frames for each bounce so we'll go to 40 and I'll move them about the same distance 60 about the same distance 80 and maybe he comes right here now obviously we've run out of uh, we've run out of plane so we'll just go ahead and we'll deal with this one so we hit play now we see the only thing that's happening is this guy's pretty much just moving straight across the plane. Uh, there's really nothing exciting going. He's certainly not bouncing. But the the thing that we have achieved is we now know when the ball hits the ground at each time and where it is when it hits the ground. So that's actually uh, achieved something for us. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do uh, is we need to figure out you know the actual bounce and this is where we will use the uh, up axis or in this case if we 
go to local we'll see that we're actually using the z-axis and our forward uh, axis was actually the y like we saw in the camera view um, so we see here at frame 10 I just pulled this guy up in the air um, and if I want to see how high because notice the local when we're on local uh, these guys are all zero if we go back to view we can actually see that this guy went way up to 261.946 well, let's just say 260 okay so he, he bounces up and he comes back down and now I go to frame 30 and I want to move him up again well how high do I move him up 260 that's where he was here so we do the same thing go to 50 type in 260 go to 70 type in 260 okay so if we go back to the first frame you can also hit uh, home on your keyboard and end will go to the last frame so home and end um, and you can use uh, as it stands right now this is previous frame and next frame uh, the keyboard shortcuts for these two guys are the comma key and the period key so period key is uh, next frame and comma is previous frame and hitting forward slash is play so you'll you'll see me uh, doing this uh, from time to time as we animate as we go through these videos and you won't see me come down here hitting these uh, hitting these keys so just want to make sure that you guys get that now again uh, home sends you back to the first keyframe on the timeline and takes you to the last which is the same as hitting these two uh, play animation is forward slash previous frame is comma and next frame is period now we have one more little option here that we're going to discuss which is our uh, chemo toggle and I know you can't see that on the screen capture uh, the, the tooltip is off the screen um, but this little guy right here is your chemo toggle when you have this turned on notice that this now becomes previous key and next key so comma now pops to each previous key and period pops to the next key so it's no longer doing frames it's popping to the keys which is uh, a great thing to uh, to do when you're in the midst of making adjustments to our to your animation um, so those are you know good things to know so what we've done so far is as we can see if we hit play uh, we've got a you know we we definitely have something happening but this is not really a bouncing ball uh, there's it's no real life going on here so what we're what we need to do is we need to uh, actually adjust I mean these the keyframes that we have are correct he's gonna start here he's gonna bounce this high and he's gonna land here and then he's gonna bounce this high and our keyframes are correct but what is uh, what's missing is we haven't um, we haven't factored in how max deals with uh, all the frames that are in between these guys and uh, back in the day uh, with Disney when they were leading the charge on uh, hand-drawn animations and you had roles of lead animators and you had uh, tween animators the lead animators would basically draw the keyframes we just made because these are the major uh, keys and then they would give it to uh, the tween artist to fill in one two three four five and so on and so forth to create the whole animation so basically the lead art the lead animators animation would look like that and then once the tween artist came in and filled everything in it would uh, begin to look like that but there's a another an art form to uh, how these tweens are handled and that's what we haven't dealt with uh, so far and that is uh, the interpolation of these frames how are we tweening 
in and out of these frames. You might have heard of the concept of slow in, slow out. Um, that's basically what we need to to address at this point. So we'll go to my toolbar and we have our curve editor here. I'm going to go ahead and click open for this guy. And what we're going to do with this in here we're going to take a look so we see we have our sphere and we've got these guys right here highlighted since we're picked on our ball these guys are highlighted to show us that these currently have keyframes so right here we're seeing a green blue and a red line which is showing us the different axes. So there's our X position keyframes, there's our Y position keyframes, and there's our Z position keyframes. And uh, what we're going to start with, what we can notice is we see that we have a very gradual slope here uh, moving from this position to this position. And we've got all these keys in here. And they're not really altering or changing the overall curve that we can see. Uh, these are what I call unnecessary keys because if we delete that uh, it has altered the path of our curve but notice we can use these if we click on these keys we can use these tangents these handles and we can actually adjust and create the same kind of thing the same form that we had a minute ago I'm going to undo so we can get back to where we were um, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at our Z position and obviously moving this uh, these, this blue double line here was the actual scrub head for the timeline and we can see uh, over here we can see the values so remember we moved the ball up to 30 so that's about you can see we zoom in I'm rolling the middle mouse button and we can see it's starting at 30 and we bounce way up here to 260. So this is uh, the bounce, and I hit this key over here, zoom horizontal extents, and we can see a little bit clearer what's going on. Now, what is happening? Um, I'm going to minimize this for a second. I'm going to come down here, and this is our default and out tangents for new keys, and I know you guys can't see that on the screen capture but uh, if we click and hold we see we've got uh, a whole list of tangents that we can use that Max will use by default and they're all accessible right here we see we have auto custom fast slow step linear and smooth and right now since uh, the first one by default unless you've changed it it's uh, the very first one here in the list which is the auto and that's what they're all set to right now they're all set to auto and you'll see that in, uh, when they're set like that instead of a ball bouncing this is more of a sine wave uh, that we're seeing being generated here and this is not a ball bouncing um, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna select all of these uh, these frames that are out on 30 and with them selected we're going to come up here and we're going to set tangents to linear and we see that immediately that has changed uh, the way that our curves are looking and uh, what that's done is we basically see that the ball is uh, what the linear means I, I, I say it as straight to straight from uh, it's kind of the way that I've come to uh, use it in my mind so we see that the ball is uh, leaving straight from 30 and it's heading along uh, towards the next key and we see that it's curving uh, curving and slowing down as it gets to this point so it's easing in and then it's easing out from this point and then it's going straight to 30 and then it's leaving straight from 30 and that's the way a ball uh, bounces it gravity sends it into the air or gravity pulls it down 
and then it bounces off the ground and immediately uh, flies back into the air. Uh, gravity begins to take over as the energy that's being propelled upwards uh, begins to lose the battle and pulls it back down again. What I want to do now is we're going to select all these top frames and we're going to set them to slow. So now we see that we have a uh, we see that what the ball is doing is it's spending more time up here and then it's falling down quickly and immediately returning up and hanging some time and then falling down and repeating over and over and over. So we'll go ahead and close this for a second and we we'll hit play and we see that that's looking a whole lot better it's looking a lot like uh, when we were kids watching uh, well, one of those shows when they were singing the songs and watching the ball hit all the words um, so the ball is actually bouncing now and this is a good thing uh, this is and it really and we notice we didn't change the keys we haven't added any more keys all of our keys are the same are still 260 on the Z down to 30 up to 260 but because we have uh, included and addressed how the computer was handling these uh, tween keyframes we see that we have a completely different look now when it comes to this how the balls are uh, animated and if we go to our motion panel and turn on trajectories notice we can actually see right here in the viewport what our curves were showing us in here notice they're pretty much identical so uh, those are some tools that are very very uh, useful to use also we can go up here to views and we can turn on show ghosting and so we'll go back to parameters and now we can actually see uh, max interpolate for us where the ball has been and we can also uh, where is it at let's go to customize preferences viewports and right here ghosting frames uh, we can put 10 on there and now we've got 10 frames that we can watch so um, these are some of the tools that you have at your disposal uh, when it comes to uh, doing your animations but uh, that's going to do it for this first round for the first lesson here um, just kind of really kind of getting us started and the next one we're going to explore a little bit more uh, what some of these other uh, tangents can do for us and how they can manipulate uh, our actual um, animation I mean as we can see uh, just by what we did here by making these two quick changes has drastically affected our animation uh, for the better so we're gonna look at some more uh, how these other things can be used for us and uh, so I hope you stick around for the next one and uh, I'll see you next time